So we're doing a little quickie here on uh, this here carburetor. This is a uh, standard, uh, like mo more modern um, chainsaw carburetor. It's going to be found in most, you know, chainsaws, weed eaters, and uh, anything small engine with a two-stroke on it. Uh, the only thing that makes it really different, and uh, from the super new ones, is that it has the uh, fuel air adjustment screws on it. The newer newer ones do not have them. They're called fixed jet, and they actually have a um, a replaceable jet inside that is a pain in the ass to uh, do anything with. Um, anywho, let me uh, show you how this bad boy works. So, fuel goes in there. The reason why I know that is that this is the metering side. Let's just pop this bad boy open. And I'll tell you right now, I am no expert on these saws and no freaking uh, mad scientist engineer. So, pull it apart, you find these two things in there. Like, what the heck? You know what? Why does it have two gaskets in it? It doesn't have two gaskets. This is a gasket, this is a diaphragm. What it does is it sits up here and it covers, uh, see how it covers two different holes? And what those uh, two holes are, are um, impulse holes. So that when you're getting impulse coming from the engine, which is, oh no, wrong side, is coming from this side. So it's that, that hole right there, and it's coming through, and it's coming out of that hole. So you put this bad boy up, see how it's open? It lines up, so this whole thing right here is sitting there going, Going dun, 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 dun. and caught sucking fuel from this side and what it's doing is open this valve creating a suction opening this valve sucking fuel into this side then it's going into this hole which is going into this body and then essentially when it's done sucking fuel in and then it like it relaxes it pushes fuel out through this hole which goes down this guy See, which goes over here to this fuel filter, uh, this little like you know, end resort fuel filter that you know it, last stuff you don't want it going into your the carburetor. And I'll tell you, there's a here's a quick tip, tick tip, the quick tech tip for you. Best thing to do this. Is do this on your mom's countertop in the kitchen with hardwood floors or any hard surface that's not carpeted because there's lots of parts in here that suck up uh, that suck up the uh, excuse me. There's a lot of uh, small parts in here that carpet just sucks up. So anyway, and please do this when like your folks are not home. And don't tell them I told you to do it because I don't want to get any nasty emails. So, anyway, you can tell this one's kind of modern. How, let me adjust this a little bit. Let me, you can tell this is a little bit modern because it has a fixed jet, so it's only going to allow X amount of fuel to go into the, um, the high jet. And, no, excuse me. That's a low jet. It's just uh, that's what it's, it's fixing. It's not gonna let any more fuel in there. Right, get my pointer stick out. Actually, let's get on digressing. Let's go. Let's follow the path. So the fuel comes in through this guy, or go. We've left it. It goes through this filter. It comes up underneath this seat. Again, with uh, the impulse, it's sitting there going like this, moving this up and down. And it's actually, uh, this this is called a metering lever. And what it does is it's essentially controlling how much fuel, for lack of a better term, controlling fuel pressure inside the, in here, inside the actual uh, diaphragm. And uh, you could actually, if you've taken your carburetor apart and you, th you put a new diaphragm metering lever in there and your saw is either Puking fuel out of the carburetor, or it's not running. It's 
drawing too lean, most likely your metering lever is too high. Best way, best way for it to be, I mean, this is how wall bar does it, is it should be with this surface right here. With this surface right here, it should be completely level with uh, both sides there. That's the best way to do it when it's not, um, with it fully closed, it should just be level like that. That's the closest way to paint, because I don't know what kind of carburetor you have. Anyway, from there, what it does, also, side note, there should be a little plug covering this hole right here, but there is not. Um, those are actually the idle jets. Zoom in. And a little focus right there. Those are the actual idle jets, which the fuel gets put in here, goes into this uh, meat controlled by this uh, this jet right here, controlled by this control the screw right here. That's do 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 do. Is by that little that needle right there. And the way they keep the those needles from backing out or doing funny stuff, so they have like this uh, an interference fit thread where the the threads inside this little block versus these threads on the screw are kind of different, so they actually grip each other. And no, oh, hold on a second. So, here's the idle circuit. There's the idle jet right there. And this camera just does not want to focus today. It's right there. So, when it's closed, the throttle's closed, it's this little hole in the actual, uh, and the butterfly is actually creating a little draft right there to suck up fuel from the those little holes. But when you open up the throttle, it loses that suction and it goes away and it goes on to the main jet. Wade, you see that guy right there? That's whoop. That guy down there. Yeah, it's right there. That guy right there is the main jet. Go back over here. Here's a plug that cover that covers it. And there's where the fuel for the main jet goes in. And um, obviously this is a high jet. And you can tell it has a, one of those plastic caps on it. That I don't want to break it right now. Because it's essentially the same thing as the idle jet. Um, and then depending on your fuel and air mixture. I mean once you go half, go start going crack, th crack throttle. That's when it goes off of the idle jet and starts making around the main jet. And there's some controversy that when you're just running kind of crack throttle, just a little bit of throttle, you're actually kind of leaning the engine out because you're turning off the idle jet and turning on the main jet. And that little quick little period, your saw might be running a little lean, which honestly I've never heard before or I've never seen firsthand before. And, um, but yeah, and then. When you're running full throttle, it's just running off the main jet. No problems. Um, also, here's a quick tip for you. If you're you you're working on a on a saw, weed or whatever, and you can't tell which jet is the high and which one's the low, best quickest way to do it, 99.99% of the time, the low jet is closest to the uh, engine because it's always going to be right underneath the, thro the throttle body. And yeah, that's it. Um, also, the, uh, nope, this carburetor isn't. Um, also, if on, you pull your carburetor off and you can't even put a new carburetor kit in, it just will not run right worth the hell. 
you replace the impulse line, you replace the fuel line. Uh, when your carburetor is off, if you see a little hole, like a, another little hole right here with a plug in it, and you pull the plug out, and you can see the actual shaft of the the throttle body. Chances are you have a, a accelerator pump in that that carburetor. And the best thing to do is just toss the carburetor and go buy yourself another was it thirty dollar thirty dollar carburetor. It's the best thing you do whatsoever. So that's the quickest way I can explain freaking uh, diaphragm style carburetor with minimal focus adjustments. You guys have a great day.